Well, as those world climate talks in Denmark approach, it's clear that supporters of the Senate climate bill are feeling pressure to move that legislation forward. The Kerry Boxer bill will likely pass out of the Environment Committee, a plus for the Obama climate team, but advancing beyond that stage will require a broader consensus among members and closed door negotiations are underway. Today, Clean Skies Tyler Suters talked to one of Barbara Boxer's key lieutenants on the Environment Committee. And Tyler, when you say a broader consensus, we're talking Republicans. Right, Susan, and right now that means we're talking Republican Lindsey Graham specifically. Right now he and this bill's co-sponsor John Kerry are trying to garner the necessary 60 votes to secure passage of the Senate climate bill. And today I talked with Senator Ben Cardin, who on one hand had praise for Lindsey Graham and his efforts so far, on the other had doubts about one of the key issues here, that is expanding domestic exploration for oil and natural gas. Senator Graham is very sincere, and I know I've talked to him many times. Uh, I'm interested to see whether there are, you know, how many senators are really interested in, in joining in this effort. I think there are quite a few. I'm not sure how important the, uh, uh, the expansion of drilling rights will be to, to getting the, the extra center, the um, broader consensus. I, I, I must tell you, I hear about nuclear a lot more. I hear about coal a lot more. And those are both probably on the table right now. Now, you'll remember this, the rollout of the Kerry Boxer bill three weeks ago. Chairman Boxer was flanked by almost every Democrat on her environment committee. They do outnumber Republicans 12-7. Now, the markup process for Kerry Boxer, it's scheduled to begin the first or the second week of November. That means the bill will in turn most likely pass out of the EPW committee by sometime in mid-November. And Senator Cardin says that date is important because he is very clear. He wants to send a positive sign to U.S. negotiations as they head to Copenhagen. I think a positive signal by EPW. I think uh, as much as we can uh, give our negotiators, I think as much uh, strength as possible. Uh, the, the clear thing is that um, we need to have a positive message going into Copenhagen. And I, I, you know, to me, the first goal is that we're all committed to, to that two degree centigrade standard. Senator, very quickly, when hearings begin next week, do you know if the discussions will be Kerry Boxer or are they going to be on Kerry Graham? Oh, no, it'll be on a, a bill that uh, Senator Boxer will be um, bringing forward, and that'll be the uh, hearing. It'll be on the, it's going to be on a Kerry Boxer bill, but it'll have, some, um, it'll have a chairman's uh, mark to it. Okay, the root of my question about potentially a Kerry Graham bill, you saw yesterday I was talking about someone who told me who was involved in this negotiating process that Kerry and Graham may be writing another climate bill altogether from scratch. That is something that the Kerry team is denying right now, saying neither of these senators is working together to rewrite the climate bill that we have right now from John Kerry and Barbara Boxer. Today, both inside and outside of Congress, people I talked to, there are mixed reports in terms of the roles of Barbara Boxer and Lindsey Graham going forward. So until they become more public, we'll have to kind of walk the fence in terms of who is right and what really is going on behind the scenes. But Senator Cardin says he expects Barbara Boxer in an affirmation of her role to announce the emissions allocations sometime soon. Uh, something that was left wide open when she first rolled out the draft of the Kerry Boxer bill. Now, this is where I caught up with Senator Cardin today. He spoke at the Climate Change Conference 2009 here in Washington. A series of discussions on moving from the Kyoto Protocol to what lies ahead in Copenhagen and beyond that as well. One topic, how will success in Copenhagen be defined? Ned Helm with the Center for Clean Air Policy said one achievement would be defining the architecture here, saying here's what we'll do and this is how the financing is going to flow. Another speaker, Maggie Fox with the Alliance for Climate Protection, she cited the opportunity for bilateral agreements in Copenhagen, things in areas like energy efficiency, something that could establish partnerships for change going forward. Now among the breakout sessions today, a roundtable on carbon markets. And I had the chance to ask two of the session's speakers to analyze some of the hurdles that lie ahead for the U.S. if or when a carbon market is established here. And their opinions seem to indicate the U.S. is already pretty well equipped for what would be the potential transition. I think it's regulatory and political will in terms of timelines because the U.S. certainly has the capacity. Um, institutional infrastructural capacity to set up a system of that kind of robustness. Mm -hmm. um, but two concerns from Aaron. The first is offset provisions, mm -hmm. insofar as they are a cost containment mechanism, obviously with certain supplementarity limits as outlined in the Max Market Bill, obviously the Senate Bill too. But there does seem to be a little bit of um, distrust. The second concern is the OTC, the regulatory um, debate. Um, we see kind of 
we see the OTC markets as needing an additional level of oversight. I think there actually aren't a lot of hurdles. I mean, politically, we need to have the will to get it done. Um, I mean, businesses are ready for it. Their International Emissions Trading Association has 170 members. Many of our member companies have been doing emissions trading either um, in Europe um, or elsewhere around the world or in, in the United States with the Acid Rain Program. Um, many of our companies have experience with that. And in fact, there's a successful em carbon emissions trading program going on in the United States right now in the northeastern states with the right. Northeastern Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Following along that thought line, David Hunter with AIDA said the private sector needs certainty, something we've heard before, and also it needs rules to be clear and transparent. Susan, with that in mind, Hunter went on to say, Reggie is a great example. It is in place, it is running, and in his opinion at least, it is working so far. All right, and maybe it'll be an example at least of a, of a national system. Tyler Suters, thank you. Certainly.